It is time for America to repent. It's time for America to receive the God of power, to receive the God of miracles, to not put him in a box anymore, but allow him to have his way with us. Allow him to come in power. It is time for a huge change in America. We cried out for revival. We prayed for revival for so many years in America. God has answered our prayers. He's spoken, I'm ready to give it to you. It's here, but you have to take it. You have to receive it. You have to grab it. So this is our receiving moment. This is our time where God is saying, do you want this? Do you want this revival? I'm ready to give it to you, but we have to do it my way, God says. We cannot do it your way. So you either take it or you don't. This is what's happening right now. This is what God is asking his people. It's time for a change. It's time for surrender. God has allowed coronavirus to be here. He will allow other things to happen for the purpose of the turning of hearts. Any bad thing, any, any thing sent from the enemy, God knows about it. The enemy has to get permission from God. As Job was inflicted with so much hardship with his life on earth, the devil actually went to God and said, you have a faithful servant here, but I believe that if I make his life rough, that he will forsake you. I believe he only follows you because uh, you bless him. And God, knowing Job's heart, said, go ahead, try. Because God knew Job's heart. He knew what the result would be. He knew that Job could handle it. God will never give you anything that you cannot handle. Even when we don't think we can handle something, even when we don't see how we can keep going, God sees. God sees the heart. All that's needed is a heart that can trust God, that can lean on Him for strength, because nothing is impossible for God. So God will get you through anything, just like He got Job through all of the horrible things that happened to him that the enemy inflicted upon him. God will get you through it as well. So God did that out of love, out of love for Job, out of love for us, out of love for his people, because God is glorified and our faith is lifted when we can see God come through majorly. When we can see mighty miracles happen, that's when God is glorified. When we can see the evidence of the power of God in one's life. So. That is what God was thinking about when he heard the enemy ask Job, can I do these things? Can I take away these things? Can I take away his health? Can I give him this disease? Can I take some of his family members and have them die? Can I um, take away his crops? Can I do these things? God was thinking about the future. He was thinking about the good that will come out for this, that what the enemy intended for harm, God will use it for good for so much good that will change the world. The world is still being changed by Job's life, by his example. Why? Because the power of God was seen through his life. And the fact that Job was able to get through all of that and not forsake God, even when his own wife is, 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 saying, is asking him to, is saying, will you forsake your God yet? Will you curse your God? He still stands strong and says, nope. I love my God. I will continue to worship him. And there came a day when God put a stop to that, all of the suffering, all of the things that the devil was putting him through. God put a stop to it. And the Bible talks about how God not only restored Job's life, but gave him more. So he ended up having more abundance, more blessings, more peace and more joy than what he began with. So after all that Job went through, Job looked at his life 
and he felt honored that God would choose him, that God would use him, that the world, he didn't even know this, but 2,000 years later, we would read his story and we would be inspired. We would receive strength. Our faith would be lifted by looking at Job's example of faith. At the end of the day, Job could say, I fulfilled my purpose on this earth. God's plan was able to be done through me. By partnering with God, by not giving up, by standing strong and continuing to believe God, millions of lives were changed and came into the kingdom and they didn't give up because of me. It made it all worth it. It made the temporary suffering well worth it. That's how Job felt. Now we have to remind ourselves of this truth when we're going through what we're going through. God will not allow you to go through anything that you cannot handle. He will never. The way in which God is glorified is when we can see him at work in our lives. When we can see his miracles happening. Well, for miracles to be happening, that means there needs to be a need for the miracle. There has to be a testimony. There has to be a place of, I was in lack, or I didn't have this, or this bad thing I was going through, but God came through. God strengthened me. God got me through it. God delivered me. God healed me. God blessed me. God made a way when there wasn't a way. God opened a door. So when you say, use me, God, you're saying, you can put me through the fire. You're saying, let your power be revealed through me. You're saying, let the need for a miracle come on my life so that I can receive the miracle for your glory. That's what you're saying. And many times we forget this. We just think we're like just skipping right on to heaven <laughs> where there's no earthly troubles. But we're going through the fire. But it's the best time because this is where you get to see God at work. Before you're leaning on your own strength. Before your life doesn't have much purpose before you're not touching many people's lives but now now you can see God at work in your life the Bible talks about that God's power is made perfect in your weakness because you allowed there to be weaknesses because you allowed there to be a lack in some area because you allowed there to be needs now you can see God's power at work now you can see the miracles and this is what opens up your eyes more to the amazingness of God. This is what opens up your eyes more to his, lo his love for you. This is what builds your faith. The only thing that builds our faith is having to go through these things and seeing God show up. God wants you to remember this right now. You might be going through harder things than you ever have in your life right now, but God wants you to see it as a blessing. When Job started to go through these things, he had been lifted. It meant God had said, God had found someone who, who was worthy, who, who had a strong enough faith to go through this stuff. It meant he was chosen. The moment he started going, going, the moment he started going through these things, Job, Job should have seen, I'm chosen. God's chosen me. And God's saying that to you right now. Many times we, we, we don't see ourselves as good enough to be used by God. We see all of the, we see bad things happening to us in our lives and we think that 
they're disconnected from God's perfect plan in our lives. We think they're just happening. We think, where is God? But God's saying, no, I allowed this. <laughs> God was the one that gave the devil the okay to Job. God was the one that put it into action. God was the one that allowed the plagues. He says in Isaiah 29, 14, So therefore I will again jolt this people awake with astonishing wonders upon wonders. And he says this right before he talks about how he looks at his people and they're worshiping him just with, his, just with their words, just with their mouths, but inside they're not, they're not worshiping him. Uh, they're lukewarm. They're one foot in the world, one foot with God. He's looking upon disobedient people who are not really receiving him. And so he says next, he says, So therefore, because of this, I will again jolt this people awake with astonishing wonders upon wonders, and the wisdom of their wise ones will fail, and the intelligent know-it-alls will have no explanations. This word right here is the prophetic word of what God is doing right now. He has looked upon America He's looked upon the American church and seen people, believers who are worshiping with their mouths, but not with their hearts, not being all in, not receiving God in his power, but putting him in a box and being lukewarm and leaning upon their own strength and rejecting his power. So God says, I will, therefore, I will again jolt these people awake with astonishing wonders upon wonders. So he needs to create a need for these miracles to happen. The plagues weren't happening for show. God turned the water into blood, the Nile River into blood. That wasn't for show. It was for a purpose. It was to turn hearts. It was to turn Pharaoh's heart. It was because there was a need among the Israelites. The Israelites had been praying for hundreds of years to be delivered. God was creating a big need, a big need so he could do mighty wonders. It wasn't just two years or three years or 10 years that they were praying for deliverance. God had made a promise to Abraham and here they were hundreds of years in slavery in Egypt. God was creating a major need so he could bring major miracles. God hadn't forgotten about them. It wasn't that God didn't hear them. It wasn't that God was punishing them. God was creating a huge need so he could bring huge miracles. After hundreds of years of needing to be delivered, God did mighty miracles, turning the water into blood, all of the plagues that he allowed, but he preserved the Israelites. He split the sea. What a mighty miracle. He split a sea where millions went through on dry ground and then he closed up the sea as soon as they went through so that their enemies couldn't get to them. Wow. That is a mighty wonder that he astounded people by to let them know he was God. So we should not be discouraged when we find ourselves with a big need or when we find ourselves with a long period of time of hardship. It, that it wasn't just a quick hardship, but it's been a long hardship. We shouldn't find ourselves discouraged because God sees, God is allowing, God is doing this on purpose because he wants to bring a mighty miracle to you in your life. We should, we should be grateful. We should think, wow, God sees that I can handle this. In fact, this is even 
uh, uh, an, an elevation. There are different levels of anointing. And with each level where, where God pours more of him into you, more of him, there's different levels. But the way you go up, the way you go to the next level is by going through something difficult, is by being tested. That's the only way. We don't get to choose the test. We don't know what the test will look like. It, may, it will come by surprise. But when we see something difficult that we are facing, we should know this must be testing time. This must be time to go to the next level. Must be God has a mighty miracle planned in my life. And he is creating a need. He is creating a time where I need to rely on him for strength completely. He is creating this need so he can show off with a mighty wonder. God wants us to have this perspective no longer have the perspective of what's going on, where's God, but see with the spiritual eyes. Look at the examples in the Bible. Every single time there's a person of God going through something difficult, God knew, God saw it, God allowed it, God did it for a purpose, and, and so he could do a miracle. And he always came through. Every single time. Hallelujah. Who's excited about going through hard times? <laughs> Who's excited? Oh, this is what brings you joy in the midst of the hard, difficult times is having this revelation. These times are where I've encountered the sweetest moments with Jesus. Intimacy in the Holy Spirit. I call this place the true secret place. Many people think the secret place is in the prayer closet. But the secret place is when you are obeying God, when you are looking to Him, when no one else sees, when you are putting your undivided attention upon Him, when you are getting your strength from Him, when you are doing the hard things that nobody else sees, that nobody else understands, uh, the obedience, the keeping on showing up, the keeping on doing whatever He's calling you to do, the keeping on believing, the keeping on only speaking positive words. That, that right there, ah, that's the secret place. That is where you grow close, closer to Jesus than ever before. In these moments, we have to turn our ears to him. We have to turn his ears to him saying, I'm proud of you. It is true. I'm telling you, he is so proud of you. He loves you so much. I declare those voices of the enemy to get out in Jesus' name. I declare those voices those voices that have tried to keep you from hearing God's voice of love and adoration over you. God is so proud of you and you need to hear that voice. That's what will bring you joy. When you can hear, imagine yourself as Job and you're seeing all of the things coming your way. Your wife is even saying, curse God, will you curse him now? Even your wife is saying this to you as Job. And you, you have boils on your skin, you are sick, you've lost family members, you've lost all the hard things you work for. And you still praise God. You still remain faithful. You still choose not to curse him. You still are watching your tongue. Imagine God's delight over Job. Look at him saying, I knew I could count on you. You're changing the world through this. You don't see it now, but I see your story being written and being read for thousands and thousands of years till eternity, changing the world, Job. I'm proud of you. That's what God is saying upon you for what you are going through right now. It is no small thing you're doing when you choose to remain faithful to him. It is no small thing. He sees it all and he is proud of it all. 
So I encourage you with what you're going through right now, with what you're going through right now, find joy in, the, in this spiritual truth that I just released. It's for a purpose. It's not the devil's wedding. It's not punishment. It's so God can do a miracle in your life. It's so your faith can grow. So God can be glorified. Hallelujah. 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 He loves you so much. And he's so proud of you. The miracle's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's not delaying. It's coming in the perfect timing. I know you want it to come this second, but it might be coming next week or next month. I don't know the time, but the longer that it is, the greater reward that's in store. And that's the promise that God has for you. And that's the promise that God has for us. God has spoken in the beginning of this pandemic. You know, he allowed the enemy to do this, but however long he was allowing this to happen, the greater reward. Like Job, he had such a reward because he went through a lot. So take heart, take courage in that. Don't, don't be discouraged when the next day you don't see it happening yet. Think with God's mind, the mind of Christ, of the greater the miracle. The bigger need, the greater the miracle. The bigger need with every day that passes. The bigger the need, the greater miracle. The bigger the testimony, the more people's lives are touched. The more my faith will grow, the more my God will be glorified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare strength to arise in you all. In Jesus' name. All discouragement must go. And all lies from the devil. You know, the devil was speaking loudly to Job. I mean, he was speaking through Job's wife. He was speaking all sorts of things. Where is your God? He was speaking to Job in various ways. So all of those words that you are hearing like Job heard right now, I cancel them in Jesus' name. I expose them. They have no power over you anymore. No weapon formed against you can prosper. Receive strength. Receive more sight and and hearing to hear those voices and know where they're coming from. May your ears to hear God increase. May this anointing increase in you now in Jesus' name. May the supernatural joy of the Lord come upon you. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Remember, when God has joy, that gives you strength. God has joy over you as you keep showing up as you keep believing in him, as you keep being obedient, there's nothing that can give him more joy than that right there. And you need to know how joyful he is. Receive his strength, receive his joy, receive peace in Jesus' name. And I declare all suicidal thoughts must go in Jesus' name. All depression must go in Jesus' name. All hopelessness must go in Jesus' name. I declare in Jesus' name, let hope arise. May you get excited now for the mighty wonders that are about to take place, the mighty miracles, the mighty revival in your life and in this nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.